Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm EVM and this is a video that has been delayed. Quite frankly, a lot of people have been badgering me about this for a while. It's finally here. Apologies, I've been waiting on, well, an export tariff to kick into place, which has been waiting on certificates and notifications and basically I've been waiting on paperwork. So I can get the export tariff in place, the final piece of the puzzle, and then I can collect enough data to do this video. I think the person responsible for all my documentation has been playing with jigsaws or something, I have no idea. But I finally have enough information to give you and myself enough data to show you what the potential savings will be for this, the Give Energy hybrid battery system, solar panels on my roof, and the third part of what I would call the holy trinity, I guess, uh, the Agile Octopus Agile Import and Export Tariff. Because this, the Give Energy system, over a lot of others, the Powerwall included, gives me one thing that they don't. And I'm, I'll use this Powerwall as an example, just because people are familiar with it. I'm not having to go Tesla. I own a Model 3, I do like them. Uh, but this gives me control. I'm buying an expensive battery system. I want to control it. I want to tell it when to import, when to export, at full whack, not just when there's excess solar, something that the Powerwall doesn't do. Uh, so that's why I went for this. I mean, it does a lot more than I've just mentioned. Watch the previous video if you want more information. You know, the solar divert, there's all sorts of stuff on the way as well, uh, from what you understand anyway. Ever since I first got my first EV, I wanted solar panels, probably before that, in fact, but I can never make them, well, make sense. We're looking at a 15 to 20 year payback period. Now there's no fit payments anyway, um, given the quotes that I got. And then when I looked at battery systems by themselves, again, didn't really make sense. So I thought, well, okay, what if you get solar panels and the battery at the same time? It's obviously going to increase initial cost, but what's the payback period then? And then it dawned on me that actually the payback period is far shorter, at least in my circumstance, when I got the panels and the battery system and this export import tariff, I'll show you in a second. It makes a lot more sense than just getting the solar panels or just getting the battery system. So this video is effectively going to give you my data, real world data usage over the last few weeks because I didn't want to delay the video anymore. Uh, and then you can predict using that data, because I'm going to give you all the information, on how much it might save you. I'll of course be telling you how much I've saved, payback periods, etc. But ultimately, I think this, for me, again, as I said in the previous video, it's the best one on the market for value, for stuff it gives you, and ultimately the key component, control and integration. Now, I'll explain a few things before we go upstairs to the whiteboard of awesomeness so I can show you the facts and figures and ultimately the man maths justification behind getting solar panels and this. Now, before we go upstairs to the awesome whiteboard, uh, I'll just give you a very brief overview of what I have in this house. Uh, because I have to always assume that people who haven't seen previous videos. I have uh, four 310 watt panels on the east side of the roof, 10 310 watt panels on my west side of the roof. So I have an east-west array, that's the shape of the house. I can't fit any more panels up there, it's as big as I can get. Uh, and I live in North Yorkshire. So the solar isn't exactly what I'd call optimal. I'm going to have to now explain the Octopus Agile tariff very briefly because, again, I'm going to assume that nobody watched previous videos. So, the Octopus Agile tariff is effectively a variable tariff that changes every 30 minutes throughout the day. For between 4 and 7 p.m. peak time, it is artificially increased, I think, by 12 or 13 pence per kilowatt hour, which effectively means that Agile is designed to make people shove their peak usage out of peak time or the traditional peak time, which with the battery you can do that. So you can see the graph going up at peak there and then leveling off for other times during the day. I should point out that this is particularly expensive day for Agile that I'm showing you right now. I've seen this, well, I've seen it go into negative values to so actually get paid for electricity. Uh, the cheapest, for example, is 11.55 pence. Then we get into peak times. So half past six, it goes to 30p. So obviously you're going to want to use as much electricity there and as least there as possible. Now, the purple line below is the export price. So you can see how it sort of mirrors the import. Now, you can never go any higher than 35p on import, whereas export has no cap. 
I've seen uh, exports go as high as one pound per kilowatt hour. Very rare, only happened for about an hour or so, uh, probably an exceptional time, so I wouldn't expect that again, but it's not unusual to see it at 35, 50p or something like that either. 11.55p is the cheapest import rate, and 14.28 is the best in terms of export rate. So you can see where I'm going here. Again, this is a terrible example. I've seen some that have been like 2p and 15p, but I could import electricity at 11.55 on that half hour and then export it at 14.28, effectively making a profit. You can import at cheap, export at high. At peak rate, it's usually no lower than say 12p is export. When there's a five or 10 or even 20p difference between that best export rate and the cheapest import rate, then all of a sudden you can see why this makes a lot of sense. Ah, here we go. On this occasion, you can see where Octopus Outgoing went to 89p. So even if you're paying 13p for import, the export was more than offsetting that, which also makes winter not as bad as when you don't have any solar. It's actually a benefit sometimes when Agile goes high. Now you know what I have on my roof, you know what battery system I have, you know what Octopus Agile import and export is and can do. Let's look at the figures now. Yeah, it took a few goals to get this right. Anyway, let me explain what's going on next. It does look complicated, but it isn't, I promise you that. This is 16 days worth, but because the smart meter has not given me all the data I need, there's stuff missing for a couple of days for reasons I don't know. Maybe it'll turn up in the future. Um, I've effectively got 14 days, is what I'm saying, of actual data and usage. So from that 14 days, two weeks, I can multiply it by 26 and that will give me my year prediction. Yeah, I would like to have more data than that. I'd like to have at least a month or three months or six months or a year. But I wanted to get this video out sooner rather than later. It's already been delayed. Uh, I will obviously do a follow up to this in maybe six months time or even a year. This is the end of April, uh, sorry, end of March and into the start of April. So in terms of solar generation, for example, we're kind of in the middle of the longest day, shortest day of the year. So I think it's a good time to do an average of this ish um, but look this is all the data I've got to go off two weeks worth and I think again from what I'll show you in a second it's reasonably accurate to give me a good prediction and therefore give you a good prediction on how much you might save I'll tell you what all these columns say individually this is my grid consumption so on each given day that's how much I've taken from the grid itself in terms of kilowatt hours I took 6.064 there 25.3 there and so forth. This is how much solar generation my panels have generated. This data, I should point out as well, comes from the smart meter, from Octopus themselves, so it's immensely accurate because that's what I'm getting billed from. This is just that and that. So that's my total consumption for the day. Had I had no battery and no solar, that consumption would still be the same. This here is the import cost. So all this I've imported from the grid there, so let's say six kilowatt hours, I have paid 93.6 pence. Again, this is what I've been billed from Octopus, so it's very, very accurate. This is the export benefit that I've got from exporting at peak times. On that day, I consumed 43.9 kilowatt hours worth of energy, obviously a car charging day. We got charged 79.5 pence for 25 kilowatt hours, and we gained or got back 49 and a half pence by exporting some of that cheap energy at the peak rate. So on that day, I paid 30p in total after export has been taken off for 40, nearly 44 kilo, kilowatt hours worth of energy. That means I have paid roughly on that day, I think it came to 0.7 pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, all the figures at the bottom are just effectively two weeks worth. So in two weeks, I've used 354 kilowatt hours, of, or rather I've consumed, not used, uh, and I've paid 10 pounds, 7p. So it's not just getting energy that's free from the solar array, which has lowered the cost. Solar panels can do that. It's also a fact that I am using all of my solar generation. So over the year, I have predicted that I will use 9,226 kilowatt hours based on this two weeks, which is very accurate because in 2019, i.e. a non-lockdown year, which was weird and consumption will have changed, 
I use 9,444. So this is a very accurate usage pattern of what we normally do. Again, using that figure and that figure, I can figure out that my pence per kilowatt hour over that two weeks was 2.84 pence. 2.84 pence per kilowatt hour. I am uh, more than happy at that. Some of that obviously will come from the solar panels, giving me free energy and reducing the overall average. And some of that will come from the battery charging at the cheap time, but you know, and, and then using it, you know, powering the house through the expensive time. And some of that will come from a bit of solar and a bit of cheap charging and then exporting when it's expensive. So I'm quite gutted that one of these days wasn't uh, where I effectively got paid to use electricity. Fortunately, charging the car uh, and not having a great solar array on the roof in terms of size has meant that's not been possible, but I'm, I'm determined for that to, uh, to happen. Now I have the yearly usage, my pence per kilowatt hour, I can figure out what my yearly electricity cost will be. And as you can see there, 262 pounds for a full year's worth of electricity for my house and charging an electric vehicle. So if you want to compare this and you don't have anything at home, no panels, no battery, that isn't just the 262 pound. It's not just what my electricity bill will be like your electricity bill. That is my car fuel bill as well. So add all you spend on petrol on your car and then all you spend on your house electricity. And that's what that is. It's very easy now to figure out your average usage. And if you have this system, how much you can save. All you need to do is, let's for a second, just assume you use the same amount of energy I do, 9,226. Find out your pence per kilowatt hour, that should be on your bill. If you just play a flat rate, like uh, I don't know, 14p per kilowatt hour on your tariff, 24 hours a day, well then your average pence per kilowatt hour is 14. It's very easy to figure out. So you just do 14p, times 9,226, which is basically what I've done here for you. If you uh, pay, I don't know, 16 pence per kilowatt hour, which is uh, a bit above UK average, granted, then you will save 1,214 pounds a year. If, of course, you only use 5,000 kilowatt hours, because you don't have a car, for example, an electric car, then you just do 5,000 times 284, that will give you this figure. So you need to know what you use now and how much you pay to know how much you will save. There's no magical prediction, everybody is different. This down here are my figures for before I got the solar and the battery. My average pence per kilowatt hour was 10.28 pence. So 10.28p times 9226 means that I would have ended up spending 948 pounds 59p. Therefore, in theory, I am 686 pounds 59 pence better off now than when I didn't have anything on my roof or my garage. No solar, no battery. Saving close to 700 pounds. And, and again, that, that should be more for each year because electric, like everything, will go up in price, won't it? I can't tell you how much you will save. Only you can do that. What I can do though is tell you how much my system, the one I've got, should cost you, if you shop around anyway, uh, assuming a normal installation. And there's no point in me telling you how much I paid because let's just say when it came to the panels anyway, I uh, called in a few favours. Nothing to do with the channel. Um, so there's no point in me telling you that because ultimately, unless you know somebody, you won't be able to recreate it. It'll do you no good. And I should point out, I want to be very clear. I have an invoice for the panels. I have an invoice for the batteries. I am not sponsored by Give Energy. Okay, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not telling you this so you can go out and buy one and I will get referrals for it. I don't get anything. Whether you get one or not, I couldn't care less. Go for a power wall if you like, but... Personally, I think you'll be better off with one of these, some solar panels, do not matter what, you know, just get any that you can afford, the best you can afford. Uh, and of course, Octopus Energy. Now, when it comes to that, Octopus Energy, I do have a referral. So I'll put the referral link in the description below. So if you do switch to Octopus, you get £50 and I get £50. Effectively, what I would say for the 8.2 system I've got and a roughly 4 kilowatt array on the roof, people are coming in at about 8,000 pounds. So eight grand for the panels and the battery, fully installed, MCS, all the usual sort of certificates. And don't get me wrong, that's a lot of money. But you will save a lot more money, so ultimately the payback period is quicker than if you just got solar panels. It's a tough one, 
do you get solar panels and then the battery in a year or two or three when you can afford it or do you wait completely until you can afford them both at the same time uh, so I, I don't know yeah, that, that's entirely up to you um, one thing that I can probably mention actually which is still in play from the previous video is that um, E.ON are still doing uh, well they're doing a special offer now a bit of a discount on the battery and 0% finance for three years Again, I have absolutely no link to them at all. See, for me, when you've got, again, when you've got a system so much, when you've invested so much money, I want to be able to control it. I don't want anyone else to do that. I don't want Tesla to determine when it exports a lot. I, I want to be able to do that. It's like vehicle to grid, which a lot of people think about and believe it will be the savior. And it, believe me, it, it does have a, a, a place. However, all the vehicle to grid trials at the moment are effectively only exporting when the trial or whoever controls the trial determine they should export. You don't have control over to when your car effectively dumps into the grid. It's all about that control, the integration, the fact that I can just press a few buttons and it will do it itself. It will import at the, let's say the four cheapest half hour periods throughout the night and then export at the two best periods throughout the day you know I, I can automate that oh and the fact that the the guy that owns the company is uh, is a yorkshireman as well i mean that, that should be all you need to know <laughs> don't get me wrong the battery has gone wrong occasionally in terms of it's not done what i asked it to sometimes but i've just rung up the uh, give energy support they're all in the uk and it's been sorted very quickly i don't mind when a company does something wrong in fact i base how good a company is on how quickly they put stuff right the app Quite frankly, at the start of the year, it was appalling, but now it's actually really good. They're getting a new dashboard coming out from what I hear. It, it, it's all looking really good and modern. So, um, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Because at the moment, I have gas central heating. So that does all the heating and the hot water in the house. Electrifying, that's going to be more expensive, though, isn't it? In terms of, I don't mean the, the implementation of it, I mean the running of it. So, yeah, that's the next thing. If, any, if anybody is a genius on that side of things, electrifying... Uh, heating and water in the house then by all means let me know in the comments below as well i'm, I'm more than happy to uh, to take advice on that one please do subscribe so you don't miss the follow-up to this thing hey hey uh, and uh, thank you for watching i'll see you soon